25 seconds to go. Good morning to all of you. It's September 15, 2020. It's a Tuesday. Welcome to the program agenda. I'm your host, Cito Beltran, and it's a rainy Tuesday. I hope that you are all staying home, warm, or at least comfortable and dry. Magingat po tayo because uh, the, you may all be feeling safe at home, etc., the last thing you want is to develop a cold and the next thing you don't want is to have a flu. Because alam niyo po, pag nagkatrangkaso tayo, ayan na. Once uh, you get the flu, uh, there is no telling and you will probably go into a panic because uh, nowadays, you know, a slight fever can land you in the hospital, etc. But whatever happens to you, if you become uh, feverish or you have a cough or whatever, I don't care what the symptoms Call your doctor right away. Wag nyo pong patatagalin because those who waited, those who delayed. And I'm sure if you're a regular watcher of Agenda, you would have remembered that a number of the people who landed in the hospital in a, in a critical condition or severely ill were people who waited the last minute. In any case, today we are going to have an interesting day. But before we uh, talk about our lineup, I just want to express how hopeful and hope-filled I am today. Kasi po, binasa ko yung jaro. I read the Philippine Star this morning, as I always do. And I learned that on the front page, and I will be reading that part of the news, uh, Senator Franklin Drillon has targeted the Department of Budget and Management, Department of Budget Management, <clears throat> Kasi po, eh, merong mga sinasabi niyang kaduda-duda, highly questionable, or perhaps irregular purchases being made by the DBM. I will uh, speak about that later. And then in the inside page, uh, page 2 of the Philippine Star, no less than Secretary Teddy Boy Luxin uh, declared war against unnamed parties or individuals who are yet again trying to sell Philippine properties in Japan. Parang nadinig ko na itong kantan to, parang ginawa na ito, sinubukan ng gawin to many times in the past, and <clears throat> eto na naman po. Some people think that during COVID or under COVID, it would be a good opportunity to sell Philippine properties na Ang katotohanan, these Philippine properties, we didn't buy them. They were reparations. Bayad utang, bayad buhay. Okay? They are in payment for war damages for the debts caused during World War II by the Japanese Imperial Army. Of course, tayo naman, you know, we've learned to forgive. Uh, we don't necessarily forget in a bad way. Uh, you know, we don't uh, keep memories in a bad way. But... We've uh, received those properties as part of compensation. I mean, it sucks that those properties were uh, allowed to, to uh, de depre uh, what you call, not depreciate, but, you know, uh, fall apart. Meron daw isang property na bulok na lang yung, ba yung building, yung bahay, to the point that uh, Philippine uh, officials could no longer use it as an office or stay there. But... Right now, apparently, uh, congratulations, uh, Senator Franklin Drillon. Congratulations, uh, Secretary Teddy Boy Luxin. Uh, our hats off to both of you because uh, right now, that is the major concern of uh, conscious Filipinos. That during COVID-19, corruption will still go about. And pag niya. In the meantime... Allow me to mention uh, some of our guests for today. We will be speaking with Congressman, Party List Congressman Argel Joseph Kabatbat, Magsasaka Party List. Kasi po pag-uusapan natin itong uh, <clears throat> push 
for agriculture to get a bigger cut of the pie for the budget of 2020-2021. Kasi alam nyo po, eh, lalo na sa 2021, because that has always, that, that has been what the experts have said. If the Philippines wants to get out of this economic pandemic that we are encountering or we are facing, the fastest way to go about it would be through developing our ag agricultural sector or the agriculture sector. Kasi po, it will employ a lot of people, it will spread the money around faster, and it is sustainable because agri is consumption-based. Eh, yan lang po. Kung titigil natin lahat ng import ng mga baboy, baka, lahat yan, mga kung ano-anong pagkain, mas bibilis ang recovery ng Pilipinas. There will be more jobs available for more Filipinos. Not just in the farms, not just outside in the provinces, but even in Metro Manila or in the metro cities, uh, Cebu, Davao, Baguio, etc. Because these products need to have a market, and the market are in the cities. In any case, after uh, Congressman Kabatbat, we will speak to another party list congress. Oh, no, I, I don't know if he's a party. I think he's not a party. He's actually a regular congressman. Uh, Juan Fidel Felipe Nograles, kahapon po, I talked about pornography, and he's, uh, he's of the 2nd District of Rizal. He's the one who is uh, giving... Uh, uh, a push for stricter laws, uh, better better regulation for child pornography, cybercrime, okay? But uh, we want to also find out if uh, the good congressman can expand this coverage para talaga higpitan na lahat ng forms of pornography. Eh, may MTRCB ka nga, <clears> hindi <throat> naman ma-shut down itong mga porn sites, eh, wala rin, okay? And last but not the least, we will speak with Comelec Commissioner Rowena Guanzon, a very interesting, very outspoken, and very courageous woman. Uh, una, well, you know, the topic is uh, light. Uh, it is about uh, the uh, registration, uh, new registration of voters, uh, walang ano, physical uh, registration. But we also want to find out about her life as a commissioner, her battles, uh, but uh, we will find out about that much later. <clears throat> and uh, for the meantime, let's find out yung mga major stories po sa Philippine Star. Uh, here are the stories from the front page of the Philippine Star. The Interagency Task Force is open to a dialogue on its decision to reduce physical distancing in public transport. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said while the government aims to reopen the economy by increasing capacity of public transport, it would not ignore the concerns of health experts. Roque added that the issue will be discussed among the government officials today. Doctors have expressed concern as the distancing requirement was reduced from 1 meter to 0 0.75 meters and may be eased further to half a meter in September 28 and to only 0 0.3 meters or 30 centimeters in October uh, this year. Now, ayan po, no? uh, <clears throat> medyo ang pinag-uusapan yata dyan, pinagtatalunan dyan, dagdagan yung pasahero sa mga bus, sa mga train, kasi lugi sila. Lugi po sila kasi talagang walang mananakay. May mga suggestion. There are suggestions that instead of reducing the physical distance, just increase the number of buses, jeeps, etc. Kahapon po, uh, I had to do an essential errand. <laughs> Joke. Essential errand. Eh, nadaan po ako doon sa may dimasalang, laong laan, etc. I saw so many jeepneys park. As in, nakapark. At meron na po silang mga manakaparada, malalaking karatula. They had big signs basically saying, 
Thank you. Maraming salamat po sa lahat po ng mga tumutulong at nagbibigay ng tulong. Maraming salamat po sa konting abuloy ninyo. Akala ninyo na matayan eh. But they're there. And I said yesterday, I have a business associates who told me, Kuyang, yung mga sinusupply namin ng mga sila, ng mga piyesa, ng mga bus, wala, hindi na makabayad kasi walang, walang takbo. Sabi ko, eh di kunin mo yung isang bus nila. Eh anin ko yung bus, hindi naman ako bus operator at saka hindi mo naman maibiyahe yung bus. So the transport is there. It was suggested by one of our guests uh, in a few months back. Why not do two ships? Meron kang 8 o'clock ship at meron kang 10 o'clock ship na kumpanya. So lahat yung mga kumpanya pwedeng magbukas o kaya a 3 o'clock ship or whatever ship you wanna do. Pero kumbaga... May dalawang, dalawang biyahe sa isang araw. Yung morning shift mo and mid-morning shift mo, mas maraming sasakyan, mas maraming makakapasok kung ekonomiya lang po ang pinag-uusapan. Kasi hindi tayo nagka, wala tayong kakulungan ng sasakyan. I mean, normally, yes, meron. Pero sa ngayon, kulang na kulang ang pinapayagan. And then, second of all, alam niyo po, eh, nasasabi lagi ng uh, mga namamahala, ng mga quarantine, mga checkpoint. Yung pong mga pumupunta sa Tagaytay, kailangan pa rin yun ng travel pass. Eh, naisip-isip ko lang, ano? Eh, total sa Tagaytay naman, mahigpit ang alkalde do, ang, 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 ang alkalde. Mahigpit sila sa protocols nila. Pagkatapos yung mga pumupunta, private cars, mga family, etc., eh bakit ganun pa ang gagawin natin? Eh kung kapitbahay na lang naman, payagan na. Ano, what is the difference between going to Tagaytay for me versus me going to UP to Fairview? Halos magkasing haba na lang ng biyahe yung kung tutuusin. And you know, if you just want to increase, open the economy, let some of the consumers ask, Travel. Anyway, mahaba po yung aking uh, komentaryo dyan. Kasi pinag-uusapan po natin health protocol, pinag-uusapan distancing, etc. Eh medyo parang common sense na lang. Okay, ayan, kinukyo na tayo. The multi-agency task force that investigated the alleged anomalies in PhilHealth recommends the filing of multiple criminal and administrative charges against resigned PhilHealth President and CEO Ricardo Morales and several members of the agency's executive committee. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III was spared as the DOJ-led task force recommended for him to only be strongly admonished over offenses of the public health officials. President Rodrigo Duterte announced the recommendations in his public address last night. Dapala said he has also approved said recommendation. Sinabi ko na nga ba sa inyo eh? Kanya ako sinabi ka po, lantara na. Now look, uh, maybe the DOJ did not find any, any acts of corruption, which I believe, hindi corruption si Si Secretary Francisco, Francisco Duque, I've known him. I would like to believe that he's clean. But sorry, in terms of leadership, in terms of being on the front line, being in control of this entire organization, tatlong president ng PILHELT ang dumaan sa kanya. Puro ganyan na naging problema. Pero... Ano siya? Pontius Pilate? Naghugas kamay? Dumistansya? Ngayon, wala siyang accountability? I'm sorry. Kung sa Japan lang yan, nagharakiri na yan eh. eh dito, wala. I, tr I trust you. Huwag kang magre-resign. Aray ko. Ayan na ang sinasabi natin. And the next news. The Department of Budget and Management Procurement. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. Uh, service has been criticized for buying overpriced medical supplies during budget deliberations at the Senate Finance Committee Senate Minority Leader Frank Drillon said that his office found out that medical supplies 
procured by the agency had higher prices compared to those in the private sector. Drillon said 422 billion pesos could have been saved, okay, could have been saved among the overpriced medical supplies are COVID-19 test kits. Eh, alam niyo po, ha, maliit lang. 422 billion nga daw ha, ang uh, nadali. If you had a chance to read my column yesterday, eh inumpisahan ko na po yan kahapon pa. Sinabi ko dyan, ang tawag ko dyan, corruption via selective procurement. Kasi may mga nagsumbong sa akin eh. Ito yung kwento. Yung DTI, okay, Undersecretary Mon Lopez, and yung magagaling niyang mga tauhan dyan sa DTI, had encouraged local Filipino manufacturers, yung mga kapwa natin, kababayan natin, to produce medical supplies for the government. Ano yung mga medical supplies na yon? Yung mga face mask, yung mga gloves, yung mga face shield, yung mga personal protective equipment, protection equipment. Yun po, sinabihan yung mga Pinoy, eh, let's produce local na lang. Wala tayong siguro dyan sa mga tiga mainland. Baka magkada, magkalukuhan pa tayo dyan o maipit tayo kung dyan tayo umaasa. So, anong ginawa ng mga Pilipino? Aba, yes sir, we support the Philippines. We are Filipinos, makabayan kami. Hindi po biro kung meron kang factory o meron kang pera na magtatayo ka ng patahian ng face mask. Kasi hindi po ito katulad yung ginagawa ng mga misis nyo, mga anak ninyo na pabente-bente pa isang araw. Libo po, dahil libo po ang pinag-uusapan dito kasi it's meant to supply the national, the national needs of the government. Ito na. Eh... Billion din yun. So, nag-invest yung mga Pilipino in their factories and then ginawa na nila. Pagkatapos, somewhere along the way, biglang may nagsabi o may pangyayari na uh, yung mga purchases ng uh, DOH tutulungan ng DBM. Nothing wrong with that. Biglang may sumulpot na maliit na opisina na ito po yung tip sa akin. Ah. Ah, karamihan daw tigadabaw. Ah, nagtayo ng maliit na opisina, puro tigadabaw, sila yung namimili raw. Eh, I don't want, hindi ko pupupulaan yung mga tigadabaw kasi marami akong bilabid. May mga tiyahin ako, may mga pinsan ako dyan sa Dabaw. Eh, ah, I respect and love my friends in Dabaw. Pero this small group, medyo parang ang feeling yata nila, eh, Ewan eh, ko, nag na lang sila. So, eh, what happened? Aba, sila na ang humawak nitong project na ito na inumpisahan ng DTI. Ano kaya nyo nangyari? Di, parang okay lang. One hand to the other, di ba? Hindi po. Yung ngayong mga Pilipinong naanyayahan ng DTI, na-encourage ng DTI, nagiintay ng wala. Nagawa na nila yung factories nila, na-set up na nila yung kanilang operation. Naghanap sila ng kontrata. Aba, kanyo, ito po ang sumbong sa akin. Sumbong lang, ha? Eh, sabi nung isa, merong nakakuha ng contract sa DBM. Pero hindi namin maintindihan, but ayaw siyang payaga mag-deliver nung kanyang mga ginawa. Ano, kanyo? Oo, ayaw, niyang, ayaw siyang payagan. O sinasabi siya, huwag ka muna mag-deliver. Tapos yung iba, okay, they were told, the others were told, uh, yeah, 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 your contract is in. Uh, yung ilang beses na, biglang walang nangyayari. Eh pagkatapos, ito ka nyo, sasabihin ni Senator Franklin Drillon na may mga pinamili na pala, pinamili itong mga tiga DBM procurement uh, whatever office sila dyan. Eh naku po, eh medyo yan na yung sinasabi namin. Kailangan po, sandali lang po, Ginoong Gabriel, ano, sandali lang. Uh, ito yung sinasabi natin. Ito yung kailangan binabantayan. Kasi mahirap ito eh. Ang dami na nagsusumbong. 
eh baka diyan pa magsimula yung mga problema. Okay, let us go to our uh, next guest kasi uh, uh, baka maubusan daw ng oras. Hindi maubusan ng oras. Let's uh, talk to uh, party list congressman Argel Joseph Kabatbat. Congressman Kabatbat, magandang umaga po. Uh, magandang umaga po sa inyo, Sir Sito. Uh, good morning po sa ating uh, viewers and listeners. Uh, it's an Pasen honor to be invited here. Eh, pasensya ka na kung Argel, ah, medyo nakain ko ng konti yung oras pero stretch natin. Eh kasi alam nyo, lahat naman tayo ang gusto natin, interest ng bansa natin. We are all devoted uh, and uh, dedicated to the upliftment of our government. You're one of those. Ang balita ko, eh, pinaglalaban mo ng pitpitan na magkaroon ng mas maraming pondo para sa agriculture. What is happening right now? Well, for the past few years, tama po kayo na sa tuwing nag-re-request uh, ang DA ng uh, budget, for example, for 2019, nasa 271 billion, pero ang na-approve lang is around uh, 63 billion. Uh, ngayon naman po, 284 billion ang ni-request nila, ang na-approve lang is around 64 billion. So, yun po ang uh, kinasasama din ng loob ng uh, mga kaibigan natin sa DA na kailangan na nila ng pondo para magawa ang plano nila. So, kung bibigyan lang sila ng parte ng nire-request nila, uh, ano po ang magagawa ng ganong kaliit na uh, pondo para ma-modernize ang uh, ating agriculture? So, yan po ang sitwasyon ngayon. Pero natuwa naman po tayo noong nag uh, si Presidente at doon hmm. nilata yung plant, plant, plant program at uh, mayroong 66 billion na stimulus package na para sa agriculture. Uh, ngayon po, napirmahan na yung bayan niyan. Uh, unfortunately, out of the 66 billion, I think 24 billion lang ang, uh, ang uh, naisama. So kulang pa po tayo ng 42 billion. Kaya kausap ko po sila, Secretary Dar, si Yusek Ariel, sabi, magkano ba ang kailangan nyo na increase? Sabi nila, yun lang ipinakaku sa amin na uh, yung 66 billion total aprobado na yung 24 billion, dagdagan na lang, yun na lang 42 billion na natitira, kaya na namin ituloy yung mga plano namin for uh, Philippine agriculture. Eh, Congressman, sino ba ang nang chachani niyan? Sino yung chumachani ng budget ng Department of Agriculture? Kasi kung papakinggan mo nga naman si Presidente, sabi niya, plan, 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 di ba? Eh, si DA Secretary Dar. Sabi na, oh, it's going to be a big leap for Department of Agriculture. Sino sa mga kasama mo ang nangiipit o nang, nang lilihis legislation ng budget? Alam nyo po, wala, tingin ko wala naman po sa kasamahan ko. Ang mm. proseso po kasi nila, uh, punta sila sa DBM, kaya lang, ito lang inaaprobahan. In fairness to my colleagues in Congress, unti-unti okay. na po talaga nilang uh, naiintindihan na kailangan natin na mas malaking pondo for agriculture. Mm. Ito talaga yung susi, lalong-lalo na ngayong pandemic. Kung naalala nyo po, <clears throat> nung during the early days ng lockdown, biglang nag ng Vietnam na hindi tayo papadala ng bigas. So, uh -huh. <clears throat> biglang, biglang uh, asan ta, ano yung kakainin natin? For the longest time, ang framework natin ay food security, which means we rely on import for our food consumption. Uh, kaya naman yan po ang pinagsisigawan natin sa Congress. Baka it's about time we change our framework from food security to food sovereignty. Dapat po, napapakain natin yung sarili natin, hindi yung umaasa tayo sa ibang bansa. So, alam nyo po, mabalik tayo. Uh, may colleagues in Congress, uh, supportado po nila ngayon ng uh, Department of Agriculture. In fact, nung nag-move po ako for additional 42 billion funding for the department, uh, mabilis po itong inaprobahan ng uh, committee. Mm -hmm. uh, kaya po sana, konting lobbying pa to make sure na talagang maipasok natin yan sa GAB One, at uh, inihiling din po natin, sana ganoon din ng uh, Senate, uh, mm -hmm. maaprobahan din yung ating uh, move for additional 42 billion. So I think this is enough. Kasi inassure naman po tayo nila, Secretary Dar, na sapat, sapat na to kahit pa paano, we'll, we'll make do with this 100 billion plus. Yeah, we don't, we don't have an argument. We have no problem of how much additional, uh, how much has to be added to fulfill the necessary funding. Kasi ang nangyayari kasi sa gobyerno natin in the past, ano, uh, many administrations in the past, parang magpropropose ang isang departamento, lalakihan na kasi alam nila na pag dumating sa mga congressman, 
epa, hihiwa-hiwain yan, gigilitan yan hanggang lumiit na lang yan. Pero ngayon, mismong executive, legislative ang nagsasabing kailangan dyan na. That is our next uh, battleship. That is where we go. But I, I know, uh, I still need an answer. Who is choking or closing the faucet? DBM ba? Well, uh, sa, tama po kayo. Pag nag-request ng uh, department, malaki na. Kaya lang, uh, maliit ang aaprobahan. Pero sa experience ko po, uh, kasi uh, neophyte lang po tayo, no? so last year oh. lang yung nasubaybayan ko na budget. Kung ano yung inaprobahan sa DA, hindi na po yan nababawasan. Uh, minsan mm -hmm. na-increase pa. Uh, in this case, for, for my next year, uh, for my second year as a congressman, yeah. dito ko po makikita, uh, madadagdagan kaya ulit. Wala na po sa ano eh, wala na sa table yung mababawasan pa ang 64 billion ng DA. Sure na po yan. Yan ang tingin kong minimum na matatanggap nila. Ang oh, that provided ngayon, by oh, provided by Congress, 64 yes. billion. Okay. Yes. So ngayon, eh ang problema, sabi mo 24 lang yung pinayagan ng DBM. Nasaan na yung 42? Ah, ito po. Nangako po si presidente uh, sa plan 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 program niya na 66 billion sa stimulus package. Kung maalala niyo po yung bayan ni Hantu. Oh. May nakapaloob dapat siya na 66 billion. Inaasahan po din niya ng DA. Uh, oh. Unfortunately, uh, 24 lang ang uh, na-approve, napunta lahat yan sa ACPC. Although, kung hihimay-himayin po natin yung bayanihan to, uh, meron din pong napunta sa land bank na 18.4 billion at saka sa DBP na 6 billion. Although, hindi siya, walang, walang uh, kulatilya doon na para lang siya sa agri uh, loans. So, no. meron... So yun ang uh, yun ang nakita nating problema. Although hindi naman natin gustong maging exclusive lang for Agrian. For hmm. as long as mapupunta yan sa mga bangko para sa akin po personally, uh, that's a stimulus package kasi uutangan tao, magmenegosyo. So stimulus package siya sa whole. But uh, Pero, babalik po tayo sa Agri. Ito kasi yung magandang nagpe-perform na industry ngayon eh. During oh. pandemic, imagine, 0.5% po ang inilaki ng agriculture despite pandemic. So mm. nandito po talaga ang uh, ano eh nandito yung tatama tayo sa loto basta bigyan natin ng ng magandang budget itong uh, DA. So yan po yung nangyari sa budget na uh, 66 billion kaya 24 billion ang maliwanag na napunta sa agriculture dahil sa ACP mm. siya na, na ACPC siya napunta. Yung 42 billion na lang I think kailangan nating hanapan ng source ng pondo yan. Dito sa GAA sagaan na po natin yan ipapasok dito sa general appropriation. Eh, eh pa, pa, paano naman yan? Kasi uh, mawalang galang na, and this is not towards you, uh, Congressman. Uh, I admire what you're doing and I support it. Kasi may habit yung ibang mga miyembro ng Congress na pag uh, meron ng pondo, o oh, yung akin muna, o oh, yung akin muna, yung distrito ko, etc. Siyempre, kanya-kanya tayong priority, di ba? Pero paano natin masisiguro na may una may mahanap kang pera kasi wala na akong nadinig doon sa gobyerno kundi bangkarote na, bangkarote na, wala nang pera. Pangalawa, paano natin masisiguro? Eh, nakakainis na eh dahil dito lang sa sinasabi ni ano, dito lang sa sinasabi ni Senator Drillon eh, nagkaungguyan ng 422 billion dito sa pamimili ng gamit uh, ng ano, ng uh, DBM. Pagkatas, sasabihin mo sa akin ngayon na Yung 42 billion eh, sinakal pa para sa agriculture. Mm -hmm. Ano bang magagawa mo as congressman? Unang-una uh, po, uh, talagang nilalabi natin sa mga kasamahan natin na suportahan yung pag-increase ng budget. Mm -hmm. Doon naman po sa kung saan kukunin, uh, alam nyo po, uh, second year pa lang natin to as congressman, tinag-aaralan yeah. natin yung budget, pero meron pong mga unprogrammed funds na tama, mm -hmm. uh, ito ay nakalaan para sa, for example, sa disaster, Pero pwede naman natin niya bawasan eh. Uh, sa tingin namin, medyo malaki pa yung room for uh, uh, un from unprogrammed funds para madagdagan yung ating budget for agriculture. Meron din po tayong mga automatic appropriations. For example, yung pagbabayad ng utang natin. Uh, that's 12.5% agad ng uh, uh, budget. Uh, we can ask the DOF, ba pwede i-renegotiate nyo itong mga utang na to so we can have more funds for uh, for agriculture. At uh, marami pa pong mga pwedeng bawasan ng mga departments. Uh, for example, uh, although sa Constitution, 
ang uh, education, yan ang dapat number one na uh, mga okay. budget. Hmm. Pero pandemic ngayon eh, wala namang klase eh. Baka po pwedeng kumurot tayo ng konti doon. Tapos sa uh, iba't iba pang ahensya, DPWH, DND at sa lahat, alam nyo po, pangwalo ang DA sa mga priorities pagdating sa budget. Kung dadagdagan po natin ang 42 billion yan, pangwalo pa rin siya. Ganon kaliit compared sa DND, compared sa DepEd, sa DSWD. Uh, ganyan po kaliit yung, ano, yung kung titignan nyo nga yung buong pie, hindi nyo makikita yung linya eh, na para sa agriculture eh, dahil sa dipis. Manipis po talaga ang para sa agriculture. So, yan po ang proposal ko. Kurot-kurot tayo sa iba't ibang mga sources of funds. Sa okay, pero naaral, <coughs> nagkaroon, gumawa na ba kayo ng comparison study? Kasi, ito yung nap napapangita ko dito eh. Uh, this is what I see in this problem. Uh, people do not, for, for, because for the longest time, we have put down agriculture. We keep saying it is an underperformer, it's not contributing as much to the GDP, etc. Yeah. Uh, have you actually done a study, given the COVID-19 pandemic, given our economic pandemic, have you done a study on the return on investment factor? Kasi DPWH, magtatatayo sila ng mga, mga tulay, kalsada, pero ano yun eh, kumbaga parang mga ano yun eh, monumento ang tawag ko dyan. You know, uh, executive monuments. Eh, pero yung ROI on, uh, on agriculture, eh baka naman mas pag pinakita mo na inbis na ilagay natin yung ganitong halaga dyan sa mga monumento na yan, yung mga non-performing assets na yan, ilagay na lang na muna natin sa agriculture, ito nagagarantiyahan namin na ito yung babalik. Meron na ba tayong mga study na ganyan? Opo. Alam nyo po, mabuti na banggit nyo yan. Dahil uh, as a new kite congressman, doon ko nakita kung ano lang yung capability ng opisina ko. This requires uh, a lot of money to conduct this study. At ang dapat na mag-study nga nito, sino? Yan ang tinatanong namin. Meron ba tayong agricultural research or research team particular lang sa agriculture? So actually, nung hindi namin mahanap yung sagot po sa tanong na yan, doon namin tinanong... Uh, kailangan yata natin mag-propose ng bill para dito sa ganitong ahensya na gagawa lang ng ganitong study. But anyway, sa ngayon hmm. po, may answer is no. Hindi pa kaya namin magbigay ng ganyan study. And I hope the DA, meron silang kahit pa paanong study na ganyan. Pero mawala man po yung study na yan. Wala man lang kung makipakita ang study niyan. Simple lang naman po ang aking argument dyan eh. Kung meron kang itinanim, meron kang aanihin. Hmm. Uh, kung ang pera natin, ibinigay natin sa agriculture, for sure, ang balik niyan ay pagkain. Uh, alam niyo po, eh, ang problema po ng agriculture nga lang, hindi na ganun kasimple. Before, mag madali lang magtanim, tapos antayin mo lang, tumubo, tapos na natin sa agriculture. Pero hindi po ganyan eh. Kailangan, ano na po eh, meron ng buong world economy na involved, meron ng liberalization na involved, uh, meron ng problema sa marketing, may problema sa kakulangan ng uh, food processing, ng uh, cold storage at ng warehousing. Napakalaki po, complicated na po ang problema talaga ng uh, agriculture. Pero maganda yung sinasabi nila, Secretary Dar, uh, na plano. Uh, kasi po, nakadesenyo ang ating agriculture that discourages farmers to produce more. Kasi once they produce more, mababa yung presyo. Mm. Dahil ang dami nilang nagsasabay-sabay. Kung nabalitaan nyo po sa Philippine Star ngayon, may tinapon na naman na uh, mga cabbages sa Benguet. So, mm kulang tayo ngayon ng processing or ng uh, cold, cold storage facilities. Uh, meron po akong bibigay na example. Halimbawa, Taiwan. Alam nyo po ba na para increase nila yung agriculture nila, simple lang yung ginawa nila eh. Canning facilities. So, mm -hmm. nagbigay, nag, uh, paggawa sila ng research sa ang crops ba tayo magkakaroon ng competitiveness in terms of world market. Ang lumabas sa study nila, billion dollar study yan, uh, mushroom. So, ang ginawa nila, Nagproduce sila ng mushroom, nilagay nila sa lata yung mushroom, at uh, in-export nila. E ang kagandahan, sobrang dami nilang canning facilities. Lahat na lang pwede nilang ilagay sa lata, nilagay nila. Meron na, uh, ngay kita nyo ngayon, mais, lychee, peaches, at kung ano-ano pa. So yung pinoproduce ng farmers, hindi na sasayang. Uh, dapat po kasi, ang production ng farmers, una, diretso muna sa planta. Tapos yung excess, yun ang punta sa wet market. E balik ka din. Yung produce ng farmers ngayon, diretso agad sa wet market. So, asan yung para sa food processing? 
eh wala ka na lang mamapagdadagdag, mapaglalagyan kasi yan nga yung kulang na hindi maipatayo ng DA dahil kulang sa budget. So kung makikita niyo po yung roadmap lang ng DA napakaganda. This is the way to move forward sabi ng Secretary Dart. Kailangan mag uh, for example, sa manok, di po ba nung nagkaroon ng pandemic, nagsaraan ng mga restaurants. So mm. saan dadalhin yung mga manok na mag uh, overage na? Kung meron lang po sana tayong dressing plants at meron tayong mga cold storage. Yung manok na ngayon eh nasa wet market, ilululublob mo lang sa mainit na tubig eh, kakaliskisan mo doon mo na. Hahati-hatiin. Kung meron kayong dressing plants, kung nahati-hati mo yan, may bebenta mo yan ng tilid-tilid, tilad-tilad, mas maltaki, ma- nadagdagan mo ng value yung produkto ng farmers. At pagka nai-store mo yan sa cold storage facilities, ilabas mo yan pagka maganda ang presyo. So, ito yung mga kulang na infrastructure and facilities na kailangan ng agriculture to modernize. Things mm. like this. Warehouse, cold storage. At yan po dapat yung uh, we should he- heavily invest on those kinds of infrastructure and facilities. Na matanong ko lang congressman kasi alam mo itong mga nakaraang araw, yung mga kakilala kong mga nag-retire, medyo may kaya sa buhay, eh marami-rami itong mga taon to nagtatayuan ng mga farms. Ang mga tinatayo nilang farm ay sabihin na natin mga 5 hectares o 3 hectares o 10 hectares ganon. Yung mga private citizen to na nag-retire na at uh, post sila ng post sa Facebook, yung mga inani nila sa mga punong kahoy, sa mga kambing, etc. And naisip ko lang, meron ba tayong programa sa Kongreso, sa Department of Agriculture, where these private sector individuals can partner, kumbaga no, parang sa TV, co-production, joint venture, na for for mga retirees, gawin natin tong national program kasi sila may pera, may kaalaman, pero ayaw na nilang bumili ng lupa. Kasi katulad ako, inaanyayahan ako ng mga kaibigan ko. Kuyang, balik ka na dito sa Koron. Magtayo na tayo ulit ng ano, tourism facility. Eh sabi ko, eh papano naman ako babalik dyan? Bibili ka pa lang ng lupa, milyon na ang gagastusin mo. Wala tayong ganong klaseng pera. Pero... Maraming lupa ang ang government, maraming uh, foreshores, etc. Tapos marami namang mga Pilipinong pwedeng magpatakbo ng negosyo, pero wala ako nadidinig na partnership on a national basis ba? Hmm. Well, alam niyo po, maikwento ko lang. Marami po tayong idle lands. Uh, oh. Nakakatuwa nga pong makita, marami rin po sa Facebook po, uh, timeline ko na mga nagsisibulang magtanim, ganyan. Okay yan. Pero alam nyo po ba, pagka yung mga matatagal nang magsasaka, pagtatanimin mo, for example, gulay, bibigyan oh. mo ng libreng seeds, hindi nila itatanim eh. Kasi ang problema nila, sa namin to dadalhin? Mm. O nga, nagtanim ako ng ilang hektaryang kalabasa o petsay, eh saan ko dadalhin to? Mm-hmm. Alam nyo po, yan ang problema. May mga kilala, may kilala na ba silang trader? Ang problema, pagka trader na naman na nasabi mo, mali na agad yun eh. They should oh. be able to process their products and be able to market their products on their own. Mm-hmm. Uh, sa ngayon po, uh, meron namang ginagawa ang DA na nakikita ko, yung kadiwa, na doon pwedeng makapagbenta ang mga farmers directly. Ang Yun. pagsasaka party list, meron din po kami sariling initiative. Nagtayo po kami dito ng magsasaka outlet. We sell our products at uh, uh, 20 to 30% cheaper, pero we buy it from the farmers at a higher price. Alam mo kaya naman eh. Kaya naman po talagang gawin 'yon eh. Uh, kung ma- ano lang kung uh, naayos lang natin yung supply chain. So, 'yan po ang kulang. Alam niyo po babalik at babalik tayo doon sa saan po ang market nila at uh, kung may po proseso po nila sana yung mga produkto nila. Eh ako ay nananalig. Uh, I'm really I'm praying, I'm hoping uh, Congressman Kabatbat that uh, mapursu mo 'yan. Mapatuloy-tuloy niyo yung ginagawa niyo sa party list niyo yan uh, ganyan. Kasi yun nga po ang problema. Kasi maraming mga syudad, there are many cities in Metro Manila na nagkaroon na ng parang, uh, oh, pag hindi mo kinatay sa, dito mo kinatay yung baboy, eh, hindi, na, hindi mo pwedeng ibenta. Parang uh, sudadaan ka ngayon sa trader, yung trader may kakonchaba na dun sa syudad. Parang I, every night, I, I kid you not, every night I am praying to the good Lord, to remove this corruption, these uh, schemes dito sa agriculture, particularly dun sa sinasabi mong 
destination, yung market. No? Sana po ipagpatuloy niyan, Congressman, and uh, pagpalain kayo ng Panginoon. And uh, I'm, uh, we are available to you uh, kung meron kang mga isi-share na mga ideas o gusto mong ipagpatuloy itong pagtulak, uh, suporta sa agrikultura. Maraming salamat po, Congressman. Maraming salamat din po at uh, mabuhay po kayo. Okay. Yan po si Congressman Argel Joseph Kabatbat. Alam niyo po, eh, uh, we need to support people like him kasi he understands the problem because he represents the farmers. And time and again, yan po yung mga pinag-uusapan namin ni Secretary Dar. Sabi ko, Secretary, dapat kada barangay meron ng, tiyang, ano, meron ng talipapa. Matinong talipapa. Malinis na talipapa. Huwag po natin gawing trending. Huwag natin gawing parang saucy na, oy, uh, ano, parang, eh, eh, hindi, may, kasi ayoko nang gamitin yung term ng mga kaibigan ko. Ang tatayo ba ng mga weekend market? Eh, Talipapa na malinis, na permanenteng location. Because if there is a permanent site na madisente, the neighborhood will start producing knowing that they can sell their goods there. Eh, naku po, eh, kung Pasko nga, hindi ba? Lalo na ngayon, uh, wala nang maraming, maraming wala nang trabaho. That would make a difference. In any case, let's uh, move on with the program. We'll go for a quick break. And when we come back, we go to our next guest. Congressman Juan Fidel Felipe Nograles ng 2nd District of Rizal to talk about this uh, uh, problem with the uh, Anti-Child Pornography Act here on Agenda. Welcome back to the program agenda. I'm Sito Beltran. And at this point of the program, let's uh, bring in Congressman Juan Fidel Felipe Nograles of the 2nd District of Rizal para pag-usapan natin yung paano kala niya or his uh, efforts to amend Republic Act 9775, otherwise known as the Anti-Child Pornography Act. And ano ba in particular, what in particular does he want to change in that law? Congressman Nograles, good morning, sir. Maganda umaga po, Sito. <laughs> hey, good morning. Isa kong malaking kalangalan na may isang po sa inyong programa. Dinabati ko po ang ating mga tagapanood ngayong umaga. Okay, uh, Congressman Nograles, uh, what is this uh, uh, amendment that you are trying to introduce? Ano ba yung pinagmumula nito at bakit gusto ninyong mabago? Ano yung pagbabago dito sa Anti-Child Pornography Act na gusto mo? Opo, ngayong panahon po kasi ng pandemya at krisis, napakalaki, napakadami kong cases ng online sexual exploitation and abuse of children. Ayon po sa ating datos, may 264% increase in online uh, sexual abuse cases. Kaya narapat pong magkaroon ng pagbabago sa ating anti-child pornography law po. Okay. Uh, then, uh, opo. Congressman, it, opo. itatanong ko lang, Congressman, ano, could you be more specific? Ano po itong mga klase ng child uh, se sexual abuse uh, na sinasabi ninyo kasi 
para bang nag-generalize masyado sa sabihin child pornography, child abuse, eh kailangan malaman ng tao ano ba talaga yung ginagawa sa mga batang to. Opo, halimbawa, uh, inuulat po ng ating DOJ, Office of Cybercrime, na may 600,000 cyber tips of sexual images of Filipino children ngayong uh, panahon ho ng pandemya. So yung ating mga kabataan ho, ay uh, ibinibenta yung kanilang mga letrato online o nagkakaroon ng mga video ng ating mga kabataan na sila ay inaabuso sexually through online devices po. And okay. online platforms, opo. Okay, kasi gusto ko lang maintindihan ng mga ma manunood, uh, our viewers, that this is not just some concept. This is a reality 600,000 cases kanyo of children's images, sexual images, and sexual abuse being launched on uh, social media or on the internet. Okay, so pagpatuloy niyo po, Congressman. So hangad ho natin na palakasin yung anti-child pornography law sapagkat ayon po doon sa Philippine Chamber of Telecommunication Operators, may mga problema po doon sa ating batas na nagsilbing banakin upang sila upang ma-monitor ho nila itong mga pedophile o yung mga nangaabuso ng mga kabataan sa internet. Kaya ho dito ho sa ating panukalang batas, aamyendahan ho natin sa pamagitan ng pagpapalakas ng kapasidad ng internet service providers na ma-monitor at ma-block ma yung transmission ng data kung saan pinapakita yung exploitation ng ating kabataan. Okay. Opo. Uh, may, meron po ba? Oh, so, as far as the telecoms company are concerned, wala silang inherent right or authority? Kasi sa Facebook, di ba? Social media or sa Twitter, pag ikaw nag-post ng isang bagay na hindi ka tanggap-tanggap or a image or a thought, or a statement that is uh, not in compliance with their community rules and values, you will be blocked and your your uh, uh, post will be taken down. Hindi ba dapat nagiging automatic right yan ang telecoms? Uh, opo, doon ho kasi sa lumang batas, sa anti-child, existing na batas sa anti-child pornography law, mayroon ho kasing provision na sinasabi na nothing in this section will be construed to require an internet service provider to engage in the monitoring. So parang uh, may, may had lang po o may obstacle ang mga internet service provider dahil po sa Data Privacy Act. So sa ating panukala po, hangad po natin na ma-exempt ang mga ISP sa application ng Data Privacy Act po. Okay. Uh, nagtataka lang ako doon, Congressman. Pasensya ka na, no? Kasi I'm sure pati yung mga manunood natin, nag-iisip rin naman yan. Uh, nagtataka ako doon sa tinamaan ng EWA na Data Privacy Act na yan, eh. Uh, hindi ba pwedeng isang tabi ang Data Privacy Act given that a crime against a child is being committed? Kasi may mga nagsabi na rin mga congressman na dapat i-postpone muna o suspend muna yung Data Privacy Act na yan because of COVID-19 na dapat walang data privacy kung ikaw ay merong kang positive ka dapat malalaman ng mga tao And now, you're talking about child pornography. Parang it only makes sense that if a crime is committed, the Data Privacy Act does not uh, fall into effect or is cancelled because a crime is being committed. Nako. Uh, you know who you are. Opo, yun po yung argument ng Philippine Chamber of Telecommunication Operators na itong Data Privacy Act ay uh, naging balakid 
upang maging mas epektibo ang kanilang pag-monitor ng online sexual exploitation and abuse. Kaya kailangan muna natin itong isang tabi. So, kailangan muna palakasin ang ating existing na batas. Kaya dito sa ating panukala, nagkakaroon muna ng exemption sa Data Privacy Act yung monitoring and transmission of data of online sexual exploitation. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Congressman, I, I uh, congratulate you for your efforts on this. Uh, wag mo pong uh, titigilan ito. Pero ma matanong ko lang, pwede ba nating palawakin pa yung coverage o yung plano mo? Kasi naisip ko, nung nabasa ko yung story sa ginagawa mo, sabi ko, very good, but can we not include any type of pornography being aired on the internet para maban sa Pilipinas? Kasi malaking problema ang pornography sa mga kalalakihan dito sa bansa natin na apektuhan ang mga, ang mga uh, pamilya, ang mga marriages, pati yung uh, pag-iisip ng mga tao na apektuhan because of pornography. Can you expand your coverage so that we simply don't allow pornography within the Philippine airspace? Uh, open. With regard to expansion of the coverage, may mga international cooperation po tayo. So may mga conventions po tayo to which uh, the Philippines is a state party. For example, conventions on the rights of the children. At uh, ayon po po sa ating international agreement na makikipagtulungan ng ating bansa sa iba't ibang mga bansa upang subluin itong online child pornography. So dito po sa ating panukala, yung pakikipagtulungan ay maari po nating mahuli yung mga foreigners sa ibang bansa na na nagiging katuwang ng at ng mga uh, ng mga sexual predators ho dito sa Pilipinas. Okay, uh, what about yung uh, punishment sa mga nag nagano nag-upload nag nitong mga material na ito? Tsaka kasi yung sinasabi ko kanina, Congressman, ha, hindi lang yung child pornography, pornography in general yung sinasabi ko kasi parang Matigil na, hindi yung isang parte lang, kundi lahat na para mabawal. I don't know if I'm asking too much, Congressman. Opo, uh, ini-expand din mo natin yung definition ng pornography. Kaya may, mayroon po tayong uh, provision on uh, defining online sexual exploitation and abuse, uh, expansion of uh, social media platforms, tapos mayroon din tayong mga repertorial uh, requirements. Tsaka mayroon din mo tayong uh, expansion ng membership ng interagency committee na sinasama po natin yung DepEd tsaka DILG sa information education campaigns uh, na, na katuwang din po ng mga LGUs para ko mas malawak yung ating maging uh, base dito ho sa anti-child pornography campaign. Okay, kamusta naman po ang suporta dyan sa panukala mo or sa move mo? Kasi alam ko na it's, it's ironic, no? Uh, it's ironic that when people like you and me are fighting to protect children and to protect the, mora the morality of our, of our society, a, a lot of the opinion leaders or yung mga, mga legislators don't find the topic sexy enough. Eh, kamusta ba yan? Uh, sinusuportahan ka ba dyan? Palagay mo ba ay ma, malal, ma, ipapalam, mapapagawa yan sa Kongreso? Opo, maganda ho ang suporta sa ating panukala, lalo-lalo na ho sa panahon ngayon ng pandemya na ang dami ko kasing kabataan na naiiwan sa bahay dahil sa restrictions sa movement, dahil na rin ko sa unemployment, tsaka sa desperation, lalong sa, sa panahon ng kahirapan, tsaka kagipitan. Kaya wala akong ibang options kundi 
lahat ang paglaganap nitong online sexual exploitation and abuse. Kaya may meron po tayong matinding pangangailangan na palakasin itong batas upang mahuli po natin, masumpuin, masumpuno natin itong mga sexual predators na nagilipa na online po. Na, napansin ko lang na ang tina-target ninyo ay mga foreigners kasi may sa paano kala mo sabi mo na pag ang isang foreigner ay meron ng kaso o may record na ng uh, child abuse or uh, ang nakasulat ba dito ano ba ito uh, sex related offenses hindi sila papayagang makapasok sa Pilipinas eh uh, uh, ano paano naman yung mga Pilipinong walang hiya, yung mga nagbebenta nitong material na ito o gumagawa nito. Ano bang uh, pa, pa, hi, lalakasan mo pa ba? Tataasan mo pa ba yung kapor, kaparusahan? Ah, opo. Uh, dito po, pinagtuunan po natin ng pansin yung mga internet service providers. Mm-hmm. Pero mayroon din po tayong provision na pinataasan din po yung mga penalties para po sa mga Pilipino na found guilty of uh, committing the crime po. Mm-hmm. Hindi lang naman po foreigners ang expansion lang naman po ito upang uh, prevent po natin yung mga foreigners sa pagsasamantala okay. ng ating kabataan. Opo. Okay, Congressman uh, Nograles, uh, isang uh, katanungan na lang. Kasi na, nababalitaan ko rin na, uh, well, ngayon dahil COVID-19, hindi ganun karami yung mga internet cafe, etc. Pero paano kung may mapag, uh, mapag-alaman na may isang lugar o isang internet cafe na popular na popular puntahan kasi doon puro porn ang uh, uh, pinapalabas nila or whatever. Uh, may, may nabalitaan ka na bang ganyan? Uh, meron naman po. Opo. Ma- marami din po. Mm. Eh, ano yun? Uh, ipapasara ba yun? Uh, tatanggalan ng business permit, etc.? Ah, uh, opo, marami ho tayong batas na tumutugon po sa ganitong problema. Ayon naman sa ating uh, panukalang batas, ang pinagtutuunan ho kasi natin ng pansin ay internet service providers. Sila ho ay may obligasyon, sila ho ay may tungkulin ayon sa batas na magkusang loob at mag-report sa mga NBI, sa DOJ kapag mayroon silang nabalitaan na online transmission ng sexual abuse and exploitation mm-hmm. ng mga kabataan. Okay. Okay, well, uh, I'll leave it at that, Congressman Nograles, at uh, maraming salamat po sa ginagawa mong napakahalagang uh, paano kala pagbabago ng batas kasi uh, this, we will be saving lives and futures just by just changing the law and making it tougher. Thank you very much, Congressman Nograles. Opo, salamat po. Okay, yan po si Congressman Juan Fidel Felipe Nograles, 2nd District of Rizal. And uh, for those of you who might think, ay, si Tono ba? Why are you obsessing on, uh, no, on uh, pornography? Ito lang, no? let me just uh, read to you what my uh, team members have uh, put together, our research group. Uh, Filipinos ranked number one in 2017 and 2018 among among those who spent the longest time watching pornography across the world number one sa papapanood nitong kababuyan na ito annual porn hub insights report stated that filipino visitors spent an average of 13 minutes and 50 seconds on the adult side in 2018, 22 seconds higher than 2017. Sa madaling sabi, kung inipon, inipon mo lahat nung pumunta sa kanilang site at nanood ng pornography at dinibide mo sa bilang at haba ng panonood, ay eh, nakaka-13 minutes average lahat. So yung iba, oras, yung iba sumilip lang. Eh sasabihin nyo, sit, bakit ba? Alam niyo po, eh nadinig naman niyo kahapon yung bisita natin, si Dr. Dan Tuason, sabi niya, yung mga mag-asawa, wala, lumalamig ang kama. Bakit? Yung mister, nagpapantasya, yung napapanood niya, 
nagpapanta siya nung ka, kalukohan na ginagawa doon sa pornography, gustong pagawa sa misis niya, etc. Yung mga ganon, yung pagtingin, yung nga kinainisan ko nung minsan, talagang nabanas ako ng husto, ay eh, yung tatay inuutusan yung anak. O ha, pag galing mo sa opisina, bili mo ako ng ganitong magasina. Sus, ginoo. Anyway, maraming salamat po, Congressman Nograles, at may ginagawa ka. And I hope that some of you out there would also pick, you know, uh, do something about this. And more importantly, kung kayo po ay involved, medyo pag-isipan ninyo. Because it's not a private sin. Everything, what, what you see, what you appreciate, what you enjoy, you become. Okay, we'll go for a quick break. And when we return, puntahan naman po natin ang ating next guest. Walang iba kung hindi si uh, Komele Commissioner Ruena Guanzon here on Agenda. <music> Welcome back to the program Agenda. I'm Cito Beltran. At uh, sa bahagi pong ito ay uh, ating, oops, medyo uh, nag-close uh, open. Wala pa yung, yung uh, ating connection. Kasi uh, we, uh, we are uh, connecting, trying to connect with uh, Commis Comele Commissioner uh, Rowena Guanzon because uh, of the possibility that Comele might adopt a no personal appearance for voter registrants with passport. 
So, medyo nako, uh, hindi ko po alam kung paano mangyayari yun because uh, siyempre, alam naman ninyo, maraming mga uh, magsasabi dyan, eh ano, yung may passport, yun lang yung mga mayayaman o kaya yung mga ano, bumabiya, etc. Let's find out from uh, Commissioner Rowena Guanzon. Commissioner, Madam Commissioner, magandang umaga po. Uh, welcome to Agenda. Oh. Mr. Beltran. Ay, finally! Nakita namin ang beauty ninyo. I am a fan. I have to say, I am a fan. Oh, UP! <laughs> Panalo UP tayo. UP fight! <laughs> okay. We won. Good morning, Paul. Uh, good morning, Commissioner. Uh, welcome to the program. And uh, let me say, and uh, I will unabashedly say, I, I, I am impressed with you. I, I like your style, your outspokenness. And no, I because I'm an encourager. I, I'm being trained to be an encourager. And people like you need to be encouraged for speaking the truth and speaking out. Eh, ganyan naman tayo pinag-aaral sa UP, di po ba? Thank in, you. In any case, Commissioner, uh, going back to the business at hand, yung pong plano ng COMELEC na no personal appearance, pe, pwede kang mag-register pero kailangan daw may passport. Uh, yes. Pwede, could I, you clarify that? Because I, I, I'm, yeah. I am the commissioner in charge for overseas uh, voting. So ah. I am uh, regularly in touch with the officials of the DFA. Mm. And so this idea came to us sa mga usap-usapan namin ng mga DFA officials, especially under Secretary Dodo uh, of, uh, you know, the next, next in, the one in charge of, uh, Dodo Dulay, in charge yeah. of overseas voting in DFA. Uh, kasi ang problem lagi ng COMELEC is personal appearance, kailan? Kasi you have to do your biometrics. Maglalagay ka ng ano mo, thumb mark mo, prints mm -hmm. mo, di ba? Personal yun. Yeah. Kasi yun ang verification eh, na method. Pero sabi ko, eh kung meron na niyan, bakit ka pa pupunta sa ano? Kailangan niyan kasi meron ka na niyan eh. But mm -hmm. DFA lang ang meron niyan. May database. Sabi ni Yusek, oh, meron pwede naman niyan ma-share commissioner kung kung may agreement ang Secretary of Foreign Affairs, di ba? And the DFA as yeah. so the institution. So, ngayon, I proposed it to the Comilec and Bank. The, the bank already unanimously uh, agreed that we will push this as a project with the DFA. Now, mm -hmm. what does it mean kung project siya? Ibig sabihin yan, it has to go through official channels and then it has to be funded, of course. Mm -hmm. Now, under the... Uh, Constitution and the Supreme Court rulings, it is the COMELEC alone that has sole discretion as to the means and method of elections. So this uh, uh, project will not need a law, but of course it will need uh, funding from Congress. Uh, yeah. Uh, why not, right? For to mm -hmm. prepare, as a, to, to add to our current budget. So the idea is, if you already have a passport, di may biometrics ka na doon, may mga tamar ka na doon sa DFA, hindi mo na kailangan magpunta sa COMELEC election uh, office. Ang importante lang na meron kang application that you are giving COMELEC permission and the DFA permission na i-share yung biometric data mo only for the purpose of registration. Mm -hmm. Kasi may Data Privacy Act, eh, di ba? So, pwedeng mag-share, pero kailangan ang registrant mismo ang mag-fill up ng form to give written consent para dyan. So, that, that would be really a uh, uh, significant uh, turnout. Lalo na sa mga bata at mga, well, senior citizens especially, no? And uh, mm -hmm. the PWDs to our, who have uh, difficulty in mobility. Especially now na may pandemic and I think it's here to stay up to maybe another, what, another year. So, nagre-registration po kami, very low turnout, pero we are open, our offices are open. Kahit isa lang po sa inyo mag-registro dyan, happy na po ang election officer nyo. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, ang tanong, uh, Commissioner Guanzon, uh, is this strictly for those abroad or it will also apply locally? Kasi nabanggit mo, you are for overseas uh, workers uh, registration. 
Uh, yung ba pang abroad lang o pati na rin dito sa man, sa For, Pilipinas ganoon? So, para po sa lahat, uh, uh-huh. sa, sa Philippines saka yung mga overseas natin na Pilipinos abroad. Uh, uh-huh. Importante po lali, lago, lalo na dito sa domestic uh, voters kasi marami ho tayo eh. Ang sa magiging 18 years old, according to the Philippine Statistics uh, Authority, we should target around 2 million uh, Filipinos so will be 18 on mm-hmm. uh, May, 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 May 9 or yeah. some, May 9, 2022. So that's 2 million. Uh, if you just uh, sabi natin 20% lang yan may ano may passports because they travel now no mm. uh, young people travel so maganda na yun that's around 400,000 who can register without uh, personal appearance okay well you you mentioned yung uh, written consent uh, for the data to be transferred to the comelec or forwarded to the comelec uh, yung written consent ba yun, pwede rin by email. Kasi parang sabi ko, Opo, kung, online written, po yan. <laughs> online. Dapat Nilili- po online yan. Oh, oh, Nililinaw ko po lang. Dapat talaga online yan. Okay. Yes. So, Kasi yung ngayon po, right now, kahit wala pong ganyan, walang sharing ng biometric data, ang, mm-hmm. ang registrants ngayon, you can go to our website and download your registration form. It will cut your you know, time by let's say one third if you fill up already your form while you are lining up there in the Comelec office. So right now you can download the form mm. and fill it up at your leisure. So pero ito, oh. we are we the concept is it's online. Mm-hmm. You apply online and then uh Comelec will reply to you if you are uh, qualified or not. Kasi syempre, we have to check the DFA if indeed you have a passport and indeed you have uh, biometric data with them. Mm-hmm. So, hindi pwedeng basa, ma, ma, ano, ma, kumbaga, ano, eh, masungkit yung uh, passport at gagamitin ng mga illegal voters o flying kasi voters. Kasi po, uh, medyo mahirap nila gawin yan kasi syempre, you fill up mo yun eh. What's your passport number, date issue. Mm-hmm. Buried up to when, what is your middle name, your your birthday, you know. So there are many things in, uh, many data in your passport na known only to you. So yeah, if you fill that up, uh, our, uh, what do you call this, technical people will, or even the program itself will already know if you're a robot. But okay. you have to test it kasi baka robot sila eh. Mm-hmm. Yung, so, yung, 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 oh. Yung anak ko nga medyo masama ang loob kasi she had to go 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 abroad to study at uh, may nahanap kaming university ng Muray. Eh. Uh, eh sabi niya I I won't be able to register papa. Sabi ko eh merong embassy registration I'm sure eh yung pala kahit na mga estudyante pwede mag-register po pa ko contact lang sila sa embassy nila. Yes sir. Yes. Mhm. No how uh, the, oh, the consulate. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. Hindi ako masyado magaling dyan eh. In any case, matanong ko lang, uh, Commissioner, how significant are the numbers of new voters each year? Kasi, kumbaga sa yung, yung bilang nila, uh, how many actually register and how many actually vote? Do we have a way of knowing these are the number of new registrants and this is... How many voted from that batch? Well, in the last national elections, we had 62 million people. Mm-hmm. So the, the the turnout was uh, was was okay. It was around 60 something percent. Mm-hmm. Now that significant uh, uh, group of voters are the women. 53 percent of those who voted were women in the national mm-hmm. elections. So, babae ang bumuboto. Babae namimili sa merkado. Namimili mm-hmm. ng damit. Nagpapa-enroll sa bata. Nagpapakain sa pamilya. Babae bumuboto. Pumupunta pa rin sa election. Bumuboto siya. So, that's a significant vote. Unfortunately, we don't have a w- women's vote. Unlike in Scandinavian countries where they have a women's vote. Ta- parang black voting. Pag nag-agree yung mga union ng mga kababaihan na ito yung kandidato natin, senador, straight yan. 
Kasi mm-hmm. ang ang kagandahan sa kanila, may trabaho sila. They have work. So because mm-hmm. they have work, they have unions, di ba? So okay. dahil may union, may black voting. Oh, that's why they call it the women's vote. So, eh, eh, sa Philippines, maganda hmm. pa ang, ano, ang prospect. Kasi 53% nga of the turnout in the last elections, babae ang bumuboto. Mm-hmm. Eh, nabanggit, nabanggit mo na rin yan, Commissioner. No? Uh, what is the difference? Okay, uh, sabi mo, doon kasi sa Sweden o sa, sa Scandinavia, may mga trabaho yung mga babae. Uh, meron silang stature sa society. Eh, kasi Dito, industrialized country sila eh. Yeah, but dito ba? Kasi, I mean, I know of Rowena Guanzon, I know of Miriam Defensor Santiago. Marami naman tayong very strong and uh, influential women in our society. Uh, what, what is preventing more women from coming on board? Because it's expensive. Elections are expensive. And then we are run by dynasties. Mm-hmm. Our electoral reforms don't work because our Congress does not want to reform. They don't mm-hmm. want to prohibit political dynasties. Eh, the men, they monopolize the positions there. The women only get to be Congresswomen pag na-disqualify yung tatay nila at mga kapatid nila. That's why mm-hmm. I said at one point, I said, no. and uh, I'm a, 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 a majority leader then really liked what I said, Ito naman political dynasty, tutol ako dyan as a principle. Uh, mm-hmm. Pero, ang kagandahan naman yan, dahil dyan sa three-term rule, yung mga babae ng pamilya nila ay nakakaupo. At it mm-hmm. looks like yung mga babae nila mas magagaling kaysa mga lalaki nilang mga anak. <laughs> mm-hmm. Makinig po kayo, yung mga anak nyo yung babae, dapat sila nagkukongresuman, hindi yung mga lalaki anak nyo. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> Kasi yeah. we, we, like in the last Congress, in the last Congress, mm-hmm. we saw the highest number of women uh, uh, representatives because of the party list and the three-term rule. So, napakataas, so more than 25% or were women in the last Congress. And mm-hmm. uh, what did it produce? Oh, Pero tayong maternity leave na, no, di ba? Mas yeah. mahaba. O, marami tayong na, hindi silang naipasa. Sina uh, M. Villar, which is a member of a political dynasty. What mm-hmm. She did her work. O, si Pia Caetano, di ba? Kasi dumami sila. Kasi kailangan mm-hmm. mas, mas, ano eh, you have to create a mass uh, base eh. To, mm-hmm. to to create significant change or reform, kailangan may, may, may significant na mass base eh. So, konti lang yan. Sabi nila, oh, the Philippines does not need gender equality. Look at, ano, ganyan, ganyan. No, that's not true. Kasi hindi naman yan ako or si Pia Caetano or si Amy Marcos ang babae na, na represents the, kwani, the, the Philippine, Philippine women as a group. Ato mm-hmm. kami, we are we are the the privileged ones. Eh. We we're, we're highly educated. We come from political families. We're not poor, but you know, in Scandinavia, again, where they have a women's vote, union members, pweding mag congresswoman, union. Oh, kasi may mm-hmm. union eh. Oh, may trabaho eh. E tayo wala tayong trabaho. Pung may trabaho tayo, inuuna naman hire mga lalaki. Oh. So, mm-hmm. wala eh. Kasi wala tayong industries eh. Ano bang pagbabago yung bagong sa ekonomiya natin? Yung bagong phenomenon ay yung call centers. Maraming ang babae doon. Eh, call centers yun. Hindi naman yun production eh. Hindi yun tatagal. Yeah. Anytime, baka ma-pull out siya mga yan pag eh, this is already unsafe. Oh, marami ng EJK, maraming drugs, marami oh They can pull out anytime. Di ba? We can lose jobs anytime. Ang yeah. uh, 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 ano ko lang is uh, voter registration, yung voters, uh, importante maliban sa register, sa high turnout ng registration, ay yung that, that they are well informed kung mm-hmm. ano ang mga, mga kandidato at anong kaibahan nila sa mga ibang kandidato. They should be able to differentiate, di ba? Yeah. Tayo sa... Pinag-aaralan natin yan eh, you differentiate or you die, di ba? <laughs> eh, mga tao cannot differentiate between a candidate who's just dancing, dancing there 
in the candidate who's going to be a good uh, senator. Eh, kasi yung, yung standard ng pagboboto nila, uh, ng decision nila, yung voting behavior ba, mm. na influence na sila ng, ano, ng media. Di ba? Mm-hmm. Yung social Correct. media, tsaka yung media, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it influences our voting behavior eh. Eh, sino naman ang... Mag, may advantage diyan. Siyempre, may yaman lang na kandidato. Mm-hmm. 'Di ba? And yeah. they lie anyway in their statement of uh, expenses. <laughs> no, 'di ba? Very... Ako, I really push for it talaga. Ha, you know, ihabla talaga 'yung mga 'yan, ha? Basta mm-hmm. nagkamali lang sila diyan, ihabla 'yan. I'm constantly reminding our director there. O ilan na ilan na napailan mo diyan sa statement of ano, 'yung mga lampas, ha? Tsaka kasi nung ngaling nila, may na natatalisod pa rin sila. <laughs> May napapailan pa rin kami. <laughs> Kung baga sa... Uh, oh, oh. Uh, ang ano natin dyan is the voters should be well informed. Ayun. Kaya COMELEC should have to reform also its rules. Oh, kailangan may oh, debate. Oh. Oh, kailangan may libre na airtime o oh, para magsalita siya dyan. Eh ma'am, paano yan? Ang mga baliw pwede rin dyan magsalita. Oh, rakit! Pwede naman magsalita Wala pa mm-hmm. certification sila na hindi sila baliw. <laughs> wala, wala bang power ang COMELEC to do that? I mean, to require media to devote airtime, uh, uh, man- require ay. debates? Meron po. Meron mm. naman po sa Fair Elections Act. Yeah. Meron po. Kaya nga po yung mga posters na yan na napakalaki-laki. I was personally telling, you know, Uh, our directors to enforce that. Yung mga abot hanggang langit, yung mga LEDs, uh, ano nila sa highway, mm-hmm. yung mga tarpaulin nila, abot na hanggang ano, buong building. Mm-hmm. Talagang one candidate, I called uh, somebody to tell them. Eh. I said, don't make me call him out personally. Eh, wala kayong permit dyan eh. Posters lang ang allowed. Naglagay kayo ng LED. Talagang napakangkaling ng mga bugado nyo. Sampunan ko nga kayo, sabi ko. Okay. <laughs> yung isang party list ka dito sa Bacolo, naglagay ng tarpaulin na butbong building. Ako mismo nagpatanggal eh. Ako mismo, I went there. Mm-hmm. Inakya talaga ng mga taga city engineers. Tsaka yung mayari, sabi ni Mrs. Yanson, ay naku, Sir Juan, they should remove that. Eh, ayaw naman i-remove na. Tingnan mo na mga walang hiya talaga. Mm-hmm. Alam naman nila bawal tapos ayaw nila i-remove kasi napakataas daw, abot hanggang langit. <laughs> so mm-hmm. the Comelec has to be the one to take it down. Why? Because it's unfair. It is uh, giving them an unfair advantage. Yeah, that is why there is the Fair Elections Act. Yeah, Commissioner, nabanggit mo yung uh, unfair advantage, etc. and campaign. Uh, I have long been suggesting or commenting sa column ko na dapat gawayahin natin yung ginagawa nung, ewan ko, America ba yun yung nakita ko na isang taon yung kampanya, matagal yung kampanya, hindi yung 45 days or 90 days padamihan ng pera ang labanan. I was saying, no. kung mahaba-haba ang uh, kampanya, Baka magtabla. What's your in, uh, in, uh, 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 comment on that? Would a longer campaign period make things more equitable or give the smaller candidates a better chance? Alam mo, yung mga incumbent, may advantage talaga sila. Kahit na election period, ganito lang. Sila, day one pa lang, nakakampanya na sila. Lahat ng mm. mga tarpaulin nila nandiyan sa mga project. By the way, at sa COA rule, ha, dapat walang pangalan ng mga congressman, mga mayor yung mga projects sa mga billboards. Mm. So yung, kung may, kung incumbent sila, they really have an advantage, and which to me is unfair. So they have to follow the COA rules na walang pangalan yung projects, di ba? Mm. Ayun, no, noon, the, the campaign expenses are are counted from the start of the day that they file a candidacy. And then the Congress uh, amended it to just start counting from the campaign period. Mm. So let's say October yung end ng, ng, ng file, pero wala pa namang campaign period. Kasi yung campaign period is what? Uh, 
ano pa, February pa. Oh. Mm. Uh, so, gasto siya ng todo dyan, hindi na yan bilang. Kami, gusto namin. And we, we voted on this and we agree with that bill now na ibalik doon sa provision sa election code na on the day that they filed their candidacy, candidate na sila. Mm. So that lahat ng gastos nila is already counted from that day. Nire-report na nila. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, eh, unfair advantage nga yung may eh, yaman. Eh yung ano kung uh, commissioner, yung isang talagang inis na inis ako, ewan ko kung tama ito o mali, uh, the the law that allows an incumbent senator to run for vice president or run no, for without president losing. Without, without losing, losing. Oh. Mm. Uh, I mean, Andyan talaga eh. Anong sentiment eh, eh, yun dyan? Eh, di siyempre nga, that's an unfair advantage again. Mm. Eh, kaso, that's the law and eh. you know, they're not going to repeal that because yeah. it, it works for them. Pero, yeah. Ah, uh, sa akin. Uh, eh, ano na lang yan? Eh, what do you call this? I-shorten na lang yung mga term nila. O, oh, di ba? Pwede mm -hmm. naman i-shorten eh. Ngayon, nagre-reklamo yung iba. Kasi yung three years daw, hindi daw sapat. Eh, may nine years ka naman eh. Sa, kung diba, magaling ka. Oo, oh, oh, kung magaling ka. Uh, o, oh, both buying ka. Oh, my gosh. Pero <laughs> yung both buying, ito talaga problema dito, Mr. Beltran. Itong election dito sa Pilipinas eh. Both buying talaga eh. Oy, oy kayo ha. Both buying kayo dyan. Huwag nga nyo ako paandaran. Alam ko yan. Kaya, yan ang De, problema ma, sa election ma, natin. Madam Commissioner, uh, Madam Commissioner, I have to correct you. Hindi both hmm. buying. Barangay Captain buying. Binibili yung barangay ah. captain na lang dito. Medyo ah. nasyak ako. Ganon pala ang bilihan ngayon sa provinsya. Binibili mo yung barangay captain, hindi yung, hindi yung boto. Ah, kasi systematic yung boat buying. Dumadaan mm. sa barangay captain. Yes. Ewan. Kaya siguro extending extend itong term ng mga kapitan na ito. Eh. <laughs> Wala pa tayong election sa barangay. Bingo! <laughs> Bingo. That's why that's why I enjoy listening to you because uh, you bring in that insight na kakaiba. Uh, no one is... Uh, uh, oh. uh, Sito, let's put it yes, this way. Why am I telling the truth? Because somebody has to say it. Mm -hmm. Na maintindihan ng tao. Eh, kung scholarly, mas scholarly naman ako sa inyo, no? Hindi lang uh -huh. na libro ko, ha? I already mm -hmm. have seven, eight books. Sino mas scholarly dyan? Mm -hmm. Yabang, mas yabang din naman ako sa inyo. Diba? <laughs> so, pero I have to say the truth, di ba? Somebody yeah. has to say it in a language na maramdaman ng tao na totoo. Kasi hindi, paano tayo mag-reform kung ang mga tao hindi magde-descent, di ba? Hindi Correct. sila magsasabi, naku, mali yan, mali yan. Dapat, dapat ano, hindi. So, kasi yung descent, importante yan sa demokrasya. Kaya kami sa eskwelahan namin, in-encourage talaga ang protesta. Kasi dyan mo na, na, na develop yung, yung, yung kaibahan ng bata, eh, ng estudyante, eh, na nag-differentiate siya between good mm -hmm. and evil. Oh, nag-differentiate siya between uh, personal niya na interest o interest ng bayan. Di ba? Mm -hmm. So kailangan ng patriotism natin sa pagbamal natin sa bayan, lalo na ngayon, dapat we learn na our lessons. Hmm. Yung mga binoboto natin. Okay. Babait naman sila, magaling naman sila kumanta, sumayaw dyan. <laughs> na, ano naman sila, generous naman sila. Pero pagdating ng COVID, oh, nasan sila? Ha? Ang magagaling na mayor, yung mga doktor na kilala ko. Doon, yeah. doon, doon, saglan ko, taba to, yung... Yung taga-dorm namin sa Siliman University, ang aga niya nag-lock out, nag-lockdown siya ang aga, Dr. Mayor Vivian Yap. Mm. Ang galing-galing, ha? Pero kung titignan mo itsura, doktora talaga. Parang hindi politiko. Oh. Okay. Kapag-agugnutin, well, eh. Pero, we... pero, leadership, makikita ng tao ngayon sa crisis. Kaya mm -hmm. ngayon, dapat lesson na ito sa atin. Dapat, dapat makita natin sa, o, oh, tingnan mo, sample na itong crisis. Ano nangyari sa atin? 
nasaan yung mga congressman natin? O anong mm-hmm. anong ginawa nila? O hindi ba sila late na sila uh, nag nag nag-respond diyan sa pagpapasa ng batas at uh, pondo, di ba? Eh, eh, mm-hmm. So ang at nasaan na ang pondo? <laughs> Bakit? Yun. Yun ang Bakit ating, COVID uh... pa rin? Bakit? <laughs> Takot na dito nagtatago na ako dito sa bahay namin. Uh-huh. Inaalis ko na lang lahat. Ako na lang mag-isa maglilinis ng bahay ko. <laughs> ah, Kasi well... natatakot na ako. Di ba? Okay. So nasa na ang kawawa yung mga pobre? O uh, nasa na ang pondo? Gusto na ang tao malaman. So dapat yeah. obligasyon yan ng ating Congress at COA na okay. sabihin sa tao sana punta ang COVID funds. Well, uh, Commissioner, pasensya na. Naubusan tayo ng oras. Uh, Mapepenalize na ako ng studio. Pero again, thank you. You do not, uh, you do not uh, disappoint. Uh, you encourage and thank you for your honest, uh, uh, dissenting at times, but very frank uh, analysis of the situation. And sana po mag-take off talaga yung proposal nyo na Non, uh, non-appearance based on the passport and uh, I hope this will only be the first and that we will have uh, more opportunities to hear from you Commissioner Guanzon Of course uh, okay. Sige po, total naman ngayon kahit naka pajama lang pwede na mga, mga <laughs> video interview <laughs> Maraming okay. salamat po Magandang kumbaga po sa inyo Thank. lahat uh, Huwag po kalimutan kung safe naman po, mag po kayo. Napaka-importante po para sa 2022 elections. Maraming salamat okay. po. Si Rowena Guanzon po ng Comelec. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Rowena Guanzon of the Com- Commission on Election. Ayan po, marami tayong nalaman, nadinig at uh, sana po, gayahin ninyo, be inspired by Commissioner Guanzon to be bold, to be brave, to be courageous. And as the Lord said, I did not give you a spirit of fear or timidity. I gave you courage. So let us all be courageous in the face of COVID-19 and all the challenges it presents. May you have a good day. May God bless you. And I pray that you would include me and my family in your prayers. Thank you. And that's Agenda for today. 